Welcome back on in, ladies and gentlemen, to this Victory Road Unite Clash number 12. I cannot believe we're at number 12. And I am joined today with a special guest, co-commentator, and fast friend of mine, Tings. What is going on? What's up, Dr. K? It's so good to be here. So glad I'm casting this with you. I think we mentioned this before. My first time casting, but I, there's no one else I'd rather do it with except you. So I'm so glad we're doing this together. You, you are too, too kind, and I appreciate it. Um, you've been doing a wonderful job, but chat, feel free to hype her up any that you want to. I will take that. But, Tings, I think you know this. You mentioned it uh, before our break was that we're actually heading into TTV versus GT. Uh, but thank you. So we'll be looking forward to that coming up very soon. I just want to give everybody that word to the wise, I guess, before we get started with it. Um, but Tings, you know, if we, if we if we just want to say for anybody that just now joined us, you know, you and I just got to see a really amazing set. It came down to, of course, in this best of three, they actually played all three matches. So that means that we had a one victory, then a one victory, and then that final one, of course, to advance on, which was IX Gaming. And uh, Griefers was who they were playing. <laughs> yeah, it was a really close matchup up, up until the end. Like, both... All of the games were pretty close, but then up until the end, as we said, it all came down to Zapdos at the end. But Griefers, especially in the last two games, were really being aggressive, really pushing it. It was really cool to see, um, but also a lot of the character changes were really cool to see. Love seeing Zara again in mm -hmm. a tournament, in a competitive setting, so that was great to see from Bowlby. Yeah, we like seeing Zara Aura, and we also, of course, uh, can't deny the epicness of what we now call the Bully Lax. <laughs> and so to see Snorlax in there twice over and played really well was fun. But now I'm hoping that we get some more fun right here coming in with GT, of course, coming in uh, with like holding amazing Lucario player, but also all these players really great. I'm interested to see Black CH on, of course, this Delphox right here. I have not seen Black play this uh, Pokemon, so I am, uh, I'm in for a treat personally, but hopefully you guys are as well. And of course, on the other side, that's TTV there in the orange. We got Zugrug, gonna be tanking it on in as Blissey kind of expected, but Toon gonna be running the SB on Ooh. today. <laughs> I do love an Espeon. People did make fun of Espeon a lot when she first came out, and I defended her. So to see Toon playing her, I feel yeah. very validated and justified right now. <laughs> you should be, because Toon is largely, I'm going to put one of the, if you had like a top mm, 5, 10 players of Unite, like Toon is in there. You know what mm. I mean? Just in general. Mm. Toon can play anything. Toon is the multi-tool of Unite, ladies and gents. So definitely wonderful and indie bear rocking of course the hollow wear we do have the gangsta not from the ivy leagues this time this is just straight out of like the 80s i would say so you got that 80s gangsta he's probably in like a dance crew that hoopa right there oh so yeah oh i love to see it yeah <laughs> gonna see some sick moves coming from Indy. <laughs> yes yes so ladies and gentlemen that's the ready go for this our next set in the semifinals. of course gt here on the purple and ttv in the orange Hmm, it looks like GT is immediately going for that 2-1-2, like we saw from the earlier games, but TTV is going for one of the more quote-unquote traditional 1-1-3s, um, immediately aggressing, trying to get it set up really early on that mid Audino, and we'll see who ends up securing it here. Yeah, and that would have been the question early on when they were picking characters that we now see answered, is that tune normally you would imagine playing in that central area, but of course you're giving that to your Dratini right now, your Dragonite player. So that was, you know, largely the smarter move from a team comp perspective. Now we got Dexter right here running as that Machop, kind of trying to run away from everybody because that was a little bit of danger if you're going to see, of course, Lucario and a Hoopa backed up, and uh, you're that low on HP. So luckily joined by the central area player, which was their Dragonite. Exactly. It looks like TTV bot lane has been able to aggress a little bit more. We see Toons already hit a level 4, which is going to be very huge for them, especially given that Espeon has some really good secures. So hopefully we'll be able to see whether they're able to have any like early game wins there. I'm curious to see what, how that plays out. Certainly, I am here for it. And so you see Le Coding, you see Espo right now. Everybody's just kind of doing that song and dance for this moment. It's those bees that go down quick, of course. You see everybody here on this top path. That's, uh, I believe, three and three, isn't it? Because we have three from TTV and three from GT. And then, of course, your central area is going to go right back down to that central and uh, farm up as much as possible. We're going to be kind of in that in-between where you wait for the next set of bees and then the dread, of course. Exactly. And it looks like actually Indy might be sticking to top to match the fact that they have like a 2-1-2. But we do see, do see GT really deep in TTV's jungle right now, dancing with Celestial's icon and the map. Um, with coding yes. also securing a lot of these uh, farm on the TTV side. Um, we'll see what happens here. Oh, we see Chansey go down on GT's side. 
Um, but it looks like TTV's backing off a bit. Few warning shots right there. Luckily, of course, GT able to secure that Audino right now. This is all very valid farm that you're going to need coming up. And so we see the hyperspace hole is down on the goal. It was uh, largely also another hyperspace hole right there for TTV to come back. And so we got Indie Bear sort of just regain uh, stitch up, right? Get all the band-aids on and then get right back into this fight. And so Zug right now meeting Egg Noob for a bliss on bliss. Nah, it's not actually going to be. It's going to be goal on goal, it looks like. Oh, it looks like Toon came up top to see if they can help aggress on top a little bit, see whether they can push a little bit further and get some KOs here. It seems like it's going to be entirely possible. Absolutely. You see Machamp, or it's going to be Machoke at this point, securing some of those. Zug is getting slapped around, but doesn't really feel it, you know, trying to say, hey, let's try to see if we can steal this Audino right here. That one's pretty nice is that kind of central bottom path Audino right there, especially the first one is like a mini Dreadnought, but the second one's still very useful before the bees come in. And so with that Combi and Vespaquin, you see really it's Zug had to kind of solo that for the most part. Toon is there, it's just sort of on the latter half. Yeah, it looks like we got full rotation down bot. Lakota going in really deep, trying to get everyone. Oh, we see we see Toon's ult come out, catching everyone up, dealing a little bit of damage. As we see Celestial also farming a little bit to try to get their nine, but we'll see. Oh, Lakota taken out really early on this fight, and everyone's starting to hit Zap a little bit. Um, this, yeah, that was nice by Toon, oh, right? Because you pull off a Psychic Solera that early on, like that was pretty sweet. And so Toon, I, I feel like this is very in line with how Toon plays, right? You know, gonna be levels ahead of everybody else techniques ahead of everybody else except for of course you do have your uh well now gt losing their central area player that i was going to point out but also at level <laughs> nine that dragonite yeah exactly and it's really nice that tune's also on espion because all the evolutions get their um get their ults at level eight which is uncommon for all the attacker players usually you only see that for their supports or defense um supports especially um so him being able to get it that early was able to really help secure that fight and win it for um ttv Oh uh, yeah, definitely a wonderful point, and also I think it's key for this match, what we just saw transpire, so now you're going to see the fight taken to Rotom right here, this is a little bit to be expected of course, it's just right now kind of hotly contested actually between TTV and GT, lots of T names right now, but you're seeing TTV is going to start having these numbers, especially when you get Celestial bouncing on in there with that Draco impact, right, but Zug taken out with the Hyper Beam at the last second. Oh, but we see GT still secure that with another Hyper Beam. I, oh, I, I actually couldn't see if it was a Hyper Beam or if it was the coding um, securing that. But it looks like they get the secure anyways, despite having a number stiff um, of, number, of, of number of team members up top with them. Right, right. So good way to turn it around. Very nicely done. So they will, of course, leave TTV to contend with that, which they will pretty quickly. It's just anything like that is good. You know, even if it was taken pretty solidly or soundly, it, that's still very good for GT. You need some kind of like moves to happen. And so what we're going to see right here, speaking of moves, well, Lucario tried it there on that top path for GT, but is not going to dunk in that 40. That would have definitely been a little bit game changing for this stage as we await that Dreadnought in about 19 seconds. Thanks. We can see actually all both teams have all of their goals up. So it's not like there's like a huge lead on either side. It's not like one team has managed to open up the map a little bit more for their side versus the others. But we'll see what happens here. I do see that Delphox now has their ult up because they're at level nine and we'll see whether they're able to use that to secure Zap or CCM. You know what? I see they throw it right down on Dreadnought right now and that's gonna do a significant bit of damage. So it's gonna be a question of who's able to last hit. And it looks like TTV gets it. Very nice last hit, right? Because that was hotly contested. That was definitely between, that was, could go, be anything goes. Typically, this is what you see, though, after you get the Dread. It's not a hard and fast rule. It's just that oftentimes the team that secures that Dread now, they have the shields, they have the experience, they have the momentum, and generally they might have already taken out some players during the Dread fight. So there's generally that push. Again, it's not hard and fast. It's just TTV completely illustrated that there is that main push that comes after a Dread now fight. <laughs> Exactly. I will say I'm looking at Toon's levels already at level 12 for an SPM, which is a little bit terrifying. I know whenever I play, I always try to get to level 13 as fast as possible because that's when you start getting a 25% cooldown reduction on your moves. And that's going to be pretty dangerous, especially in the hands of someone like Toon playing this character, which is already strong and with a strong player. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing is you got to keep in mind. That's the Toon touch. It's the Toon magic, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, interesting, kind of leaving the goal right there and it was actually open. And so when you see that happen, especially with a team like TTV, you don't even sweat it that much, I feel like, from a viewer's perspective. But if it was anybody else, you might be like, wow, they let that 40 go. Because you can see the score. Look at this. It's still in TTV's advantage right now. And they're really hard fought for this Rotom right here. So you can see the fireworks are down right here. Delphox is making this a celebration. Definitely going to secure some of those KOs right here, which were pretty crucial. But you notice that Rotom still going to go in for G uh, GT this time.
once again. Exactly, but they're not able to, it doesn't look like they're gonna super try hard to push it in. So now TTV is able to clear it pretty fast without um, without any interruptions from GT's side. It's not like, oh, well I do see actually GT, we lost their bottom goal. That must have happened with their earlier dread. I missed that earlier. <laughs> yeah, it was just during that dread push. You're right though. Um, and so that was the good thing about GT taking that Rotom was that TTV really did make that all out push for it. You know, they tried pretty hard. I mean, you had Toon rotate up there. It, in lieu of a goal, like in lieu of stopping a 40 being dunked in. So again, that's kind of an advantage for GT, even if they didn't score in that case. So anyway, we got that dread now coming back down on here. This will be the last one of the match because Tings, we're so very, very close oh, to that wow. top that's coming. Oh, and looks like they both hyper beam at the same time, but TTV gets the last hit just right. And looks like they're gonna get that last dread. I think it might have been GT. I can't remember. Or was that TTV? I'm actually, I, I, that's oh, the no. moment I take to look at the Twitch chat. There we go. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, in the chat, let us know. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was like the, the moment that I'm looking away. But anyway, um, what we're set up for right here for the Zap in 3 2 1 is going to be actually both of these teams largely going to have all hands on deck. And that's where you see it. The rings unbound often are deployed right away because you can bring on anybody in who might be out. They might be out uh, scoring, or they might be out just have, having been KO'd, whatever the story is. And so right now, all teams are locked, and so this is where you're gonna start seeing those Unite uh, moves fly. And Tings, you and I were actually both informed by our staff. This is an update that both of us were not aware of. You can see a little yellow dot on the profile of the players who have their Unite moves actually ready to go. And so we can see that down in their profiles down below, but look at this, Tings, as I'm trying to say all this, GT kind of with an advantage right now. GT's take, been able to wipe out almost the entire team minus CTV. We'll see whether this is gonna, this ult is gonna help them, but it looks like a GT gets the last hit on that Zapdos and we'll see them start pushing and we'll see how TTV ends up defending against this. Ladies and gentlemen, do you have your coffee ready? I think you know what time it is. It's Hundo Duncan <laughs> time. There they are, the Hundo Duncans and Unite runs on Hundo Duncan. So there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is now a very different match because GT is going to overtake this. GT has been playing pretty well this this match, but you're up against some legends, right, of TTV that we talked about. But look at that. Some more Hundo Duncans is going to secure this, but hey, TTV, I mean, 44 seconds. You could do it. It's just, wow, that push would have to be pretty strong. That push is going to have to be pretty strong, so we'll see what happens. It's only a 200, about 200-ish 200 point difference. Looks like they're going to split up. Zug's going to go bot? Yeah, Zug's gonna go bot. Oh, it looks like TTV's gonna get some dunk. Uh, Hundo Duncan's up top. Will Zug get this in, actually? Oh, just barely stopped by the Hoopa going down bot really quickly. Um, we'll see yeah, what that's happens. right. <laughs> they were set up for it, you know. It's just obviously we're not really using score shields these days. You know, it's not meta anymore. You're gonna get disrupted, you know, if you get poked on that goal. So, in general, uh, pretty tough, right? Because TTV tried. You know, and they, they they definitely, on that first set of scores right there, you didn't really have a, a large overcap or anything like that because there were no hundos junk, dunked in right there. It would have been nice to see Zug get that. It's just unfortunately met at that very last second by that Hoopa. So, well job, well, well job, <laughs> good job, well done. There you go. By GT right here with a final score of 382 to 240. Exactly. Not a huge point difference, but enough to still win. Um, TTV tried doing the push at the end, What didn't quite get it all in. Um, even if Zug had gotten their 100 points in, it wouldn't have won the game, unfortunately. Yeah, that would that would be really rough, right? To have that and be at a score of 382 to 340. You'd see a very close game that would just be within reach. But yeah, so Toon really, you know, you want to hand it to Toon over there on the orange squad. But on the purple squad, you don't even have to hand it to any one player. I mean, all of them played really well. They, they played off each other. They were cohesive. Won the Rotom a few times, you know, so look at that. Like holding with 136 dunks on in there. It's all looking good, but like we say, I mean, Tings has uh, definitely a, uh, what what would you call it, a, a favorability for Espeon. So seeing Toon run that Espeon, <laughs> I know Tings loved that. And Toon did it justice, so. I was maybe Late. taking notes the entire time, yeah. <laughs> well, too, Celestial had some of those uh, kind of critical moments where you would jump in as a Dragonite when it's least expected. That's... <laughs> I think from from our perspective, you could expect it, but like if you're playing in this match and you're trying to keep track of what's going on and you're one of those competitors, that Dragonite coming on in there was definitely very scary for Celestial, had a few of those plays, you know? You come in, then you hyper beam and take an objective or take a KO. So, exactly. Yeah, well exactly. Done. And those hyper beams coming out, flying out everywhere, especially with that Dreadfight. It does, it does <laughs> look like, yeah, it does look like GT got it sometimes.
like I forget which color goes to which side. So. Yeah, so there you go. Great job. Yeah, I see that too in the chat now. Thank you, Plasma. We appreciate that. But yes, of course, y uh, YFN Ryan was saying Espeon Gaming. Yeah, I mean, Espeon was a star of that last match. Even if that team did end up losing, we do like to just see that. I do want to point out, though, the use of the Del Fox. Um, we love Del Fox. I, I myself, at least with the tournaments that I've been casting since Del Fox's introduction in Unite, we don't actually see a whole bunch of it. And so, um, preferential here on my bias is to fire starters actually and so i i do like to see it it's just i don't think that the del fox necessarily swayed it too much in their favor let's say because it really was a full team effort you know whereas we really highlight tune on the orange squad again so just i know that i'm drilling that in people's heads right now but just to kind of drill that point home so Tings, let's let everybody know, of course, that the teams will be switching sides. So just make sure that you know TTV this time will be on the purple, whereas GT will be on that orange squad. And I am excited already again at this character selection team because we're seeing Tune on the cram. I can't wait to see how this goes. I see that they're going to be running some energy amp build on it, so that's going to be absolutely yep. brutal. I'm excited to see where this goes. It looks like GT's comp going to basically look exactly the same as it was before. I think mm -hmm. Dexter's on the slow bro, which I think is a shakeup from before as well. Definitely if they go with the green check mark right now, we are not secured, but it's very likely, especially if they hover over it that long. There it is. They heard you, Ooh. Tings, and they said, Whoop. no, they didn't. Oh, a little, little bit make... of a debate there. <laughs> you cannot oh. make Tings wrong, okay? So there you go. All Thank right, you so but much, yes, <laughs> the, the, uh, the gutted blue dodo, of course, of Cramorant, you guys, this thing, Toon can play a mean Cram. Uh, so I think if all goes according to plan let's say you have uh, definitely a match to see a, a match to behold right on your hands here coming up very shortly so once again like ting said gt gonna be running that lineup that they know pretty well uh we do have a fancy dragonite hollow wear i mean we would be it would be remiss to not point that out right but yeah. anyway we gotta, <laughs> that's we the important gotta point thing. out the hollow sometimes there is a hollow there's a hollow diff and it looks like ttv switching it up already they're going with a 212 to match, uh, immediately match what gt did last game instead of sticking with their original 113 from last match before definitely thank you for pointing that out that is correct we are going to see actually though the interesting component of it is running with you know you got your slow bro your now slow poke of course here on this top path dexter and so I'm really gonna like seeing how this matches up against the Lucario that's joined by their support. So, you know, you got both of your Hoopas out there. Of course, early on that six goal, you know, you wanna get those stacks. So, you know, you may just get those one to six point values and that's fine to dunk in early on. Exactly. It looks like Indy got the secure on one of those Apons, but it looks like Lakotin got the other one. So they're able to get some of their stacks really quickly. So very well, this is pretty standard, although we are going to see a somewhat early rotation kind of fast there from the Dratini, kind of hanging out right here, luckily able to still get some of your central area. There is a little bit of that divide and conquer because what you'll see if you guys, you might have just missed it, but for instance, Finnegan now breaks in right there, did actually pull off one of those central area. It's the spawn that's sort of closer, closest to that bottom path, we should say. So there is a little bit of divide and conquer with that central area that you can do with that XP. Mm -hmm, exactly. And it looks like, oh, all the bees are gone. Flash of it <laughs> in the blink of an eye. It's just like, oh, bees are gone. Um, we'll see what happens here. And it looks like Zug probably gets that one as I, we see him involved into a blissing. So just seeing us a little chancy. Yeah. Well, we are seeing our chat now with that delay. They are saying, uh oh, the cram's coming out. Ginger laughing at the blue dodo, but she said he's got such a cute little cowboy hat on. You got to <laughs> vary it up a little bit, you know, but Toon Slim, I mean, doing really well right now. Level five, of course, you're not the jungler, right? You're not that central area player. That was the key thing about Toon in the last game was that he was actually kind of outpacing their central area player in levels two. <laughs> so it was like, really, again, it was that Toon touch. But here, you know, you're, 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 you're Cramorant. You're, you may not see the same exact kind of thing that we saw with Espeon, but still, I'm expecting a lot of disruptions, a lot of uh, fun <laughs> things to come with that Cramorant. Exactly, and it looks like everyone's pretty evenly matched up on levels right now, actually. Like, you can see on the bottom when you look at the levels, everyone's basically level 5 or level 6. Um, looks like... I can't read numbers for a second, but it looks like everyone's okay. pretty matched up, <laughs> matched up on those. It's alright. Just no sweat, take a deep breath, and uh, 
<laughs> think of something. But anyway, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be Toon actually taking a little bit of punishment right here. We'll go ahead and hyperspace back. Get on back in this fight, though, of course. You know the blue dodo is not out until it's out, of course. That makes exactly. sense. Anyway, <laughs> the bees are going down right here. It looks like GT will take the majority, if not all of those, and actually Ooh. bring down our TTV player. So this now provides them a plenty of chances to score right here. Yeah, Lakoding's early rotation down bog got them to catch up on levels a lot with those bees and being able to wipe out that team. Like we see uh, Agnubis already at seven on this Blissey, whereas Sug is at six and uh, Lakoding's already at level eight um, as they start this fight for the first dread. That's right, and so we do mostly have all hands on deck when we look at GT right here, so they will go ahead and secure that right side team, take that shield and experience, and pull off some of these KOs right here from a late TTV trying to get it. But notice, of course, there's that same principle that we spoke of last time, is that whenever you get that Dreadnought, it does kind of help you have that momentum. You know, it's the shields, it's the experience, it's also the KOs you might have gotten. It's everything. You're all together for that push, and they are certainly doing it. <laughs> They're certainly doing that push. We see them all pushing, all five of them going up together. Uh, TTV coming back from spawn and being able to take them out a little bit. But Lakoding taking some farm from the sides as they go along, which is really ruining the advantage of the comeback EXP that you get um, on a team when you lose your T1s. Um, so Lakoding taking some of that as they head out. Right, right. So now we're seeing, of course, Solo Dragonite basically on that top right here for GT. That top path, likely, you know, you can run it all with that Dragonite. It's just that tune with that cram may look for a sneaky steal on that, maybe contest that a little bit. And then you have the rest of the team kind of converge on that spot. So Rotom down very far, and that will actually be the secure. So GT is going to go ahead and take that too. Yeah, GT's getting that. It looks like that we got Dexter and Zug down by. I think they were trying to get some scores in, but not sure if Agnew was able to stop them. It looks like Rotom was able to get in, actually, potentially. I can't tell. It's hard to see, but I believe okay. Rotom was able to get in, and GT is getting yes. some big dunks in. You can see that they're leading by quite a bit right now, 66 to 231 on GT's favor. Um, and we see everyone's just rotated bot, punishing Dexter and Zug a little bit. So you were certainly right, though. Rotom did touch down, of course, and so that, that does allow GT to score in this 40. That's pretty massive for this stage of the match. You know, you always look at the timer and think about, well, can you have a 50? Can you have a 40? You know, what is that like to score this early on? And so for that, it's pretty nice. Now, when we say early on, of course, we're in the mid set of this match basically entirely. Like, we're mid-game in the thick of it. And so we'll be transitioning to that late game, maybe after a nice Dreadnought fight coming in right here. Black CH obviously going to be throwing out a few warning shots as we then see the rings are unbound, both sides. Ladies and gentlemen, this means all hands can be on deck if we want. So there they are, Dreadnought about to be ripped. And there it goes once again, Tings for the right side team. GT is all over the objectives. Secured again by the Hyper Beam, and it looks like they do a team wipe on TTV. Uh, will we see them push again a little bit? I'm not sure. Um, it just looks like they're going to go for some Bs right now, though. Right, and that's okay. You know, they don't need to aggressively push there. Maybe they might look to divide and conquer, you know, so we can take a little bit on this top path, go ahead, get back, get some of this uh, wild farm wherever needed, steal the Bs, of course, from TTV's side as much as they could. And obviously, Dragonite still is going on that rampage down on bot. So you didn't even lose out, really, with some of your players leaving on that advantage, right? Because they still managed to pull off KOs. And then finally, of course, we're going to see some TTV KOs as well, trying to match it up. But when you see a score like this, Tings, this is a little bit, uh, it's its um, something I wouldn't expect, I would say, from legendary players like this on the purple squad. But mm -hmm. hey, GT is not a team to sneeze at, you know? No, absolutely not. We can especially tell from these plays that they're making. But we're going to see maybe TTV, maybe it looks like Zugs. I mean, not sorry, not Zugs. Toons up top with the cram, trying to get in a sneaky score, probably going to get stopped by Lakoting. Um, I think we just saw that get stopped while there's, yep. while TTV while Zog is running around bot with three people on them you're just it's just a blissy life out here right yeah it's the blissy life this tourney especially but ladies and gentlemen like I was saying you know you don't you don't scoff at either of these teams these are both legends it's just we are not used to seeing two legendary teams like that this far apart in the score and then also see kind of handedly one team getting objectives because again GT is going to pull off the Rotom too so once again they've gotten another objective here for this match and really you got to kind of think well it may not be the most favorable thing for viewers to see all the time but some people like it is the zap flip that may be what we go for it all comes down to the Zapdos, and we'll see what happens. I think a little bit of a favor. We've seen the every objective basically become a little bit of a flip, and so far they've gone in GT's favor, but we never know. Maybe I just did the commentator's curse. We'll see what happens. But hey, we see. All right. <laughs> yeah, Black Siege on that 
last Dreadnought because it's already at the 231 mark. Um, we'll see if Lakoti's able to get in a 50 dump, maybe top, but maybe not. Uh, maybe just getting some of those Bs. Yeah, they have uh, their eyes on it, you know, and that's the one thing that we talked about. I think it was in the last game, Tings, or it might have been the last set, was we were saying sometimes you opt to not score it in this case, just if you have that 50. First of all, it's a little bit tough sometimes, but also you wait for that final stretch, you know, right when the bell whistles, you could call it or whatever. <laughs> that does not make any sense. The bell whistles, the bell rings, or the whistle <laughs> blows. That's what we're looking for here. Uh, you, you score it in. But anyway, Tings, let's see what happens. Final stretch. Oh, we see the rings on bound come out on from GT side. I'm, and we we'll see oh, all of the alts happening. We see it's gonna be a flip, and we see that GT secures the Zapdos. Absolutely, they do. So this is sort of that thing that we've seen all game, right? Is that GT all over the objectives? Now they are gonna actually see a few of their players fall, but not without getting a few of those Hundo Duncans, ladies and gentlemen. Unite runs on Hundo Duncan, and you do see a Hundo Duncan or two right now, actually for TTV. It's just they really would need these scores to, to keep coming if they were going to try to stay in line with exactly. GT right it's now. A, it's a yeah. pretty big score difference, but they are making a good push, and they did get some of those Hundo Duncans, like you said, but they also have lost some team members in the process. Toon's, I mean, Toon's still out. Uh, looks like Dexter just went down, um, and Indy's coming back, but we'll see whether they're able to make a full push together again now. Um, we'll see what happens here. <laughs> Absolutely, and we're getting a lot of love for Tings, our guest co-commentator on the mic here in our chat. So thank you guys from Twitch. Keep sending her that love. She's doing great. As we just now see, another team that's doing great is GT. They uh, To hand it to the TTV right now at 609 to 266 is pretty nice. I mean, again, these are teams of legends right. both, both ways, right? But uh, it looks like GT, that might secure them going into the next round of this tournament. Exactly, going into the finals here, and we'll see what happens. It looks like they're all about to push bot. We'll see what happens. Um, Toon and Toon and Celestial both have their ults. We'll see if that whether that's going to be able to help. Though it, they're all, also the Delphox ult. There it goes, coming out right now, doing a whole bunch of huge damage, taking out a lot of their team. Um, Celestial, oh, it's Toon's ult going off as well, but they are missing their Blissey and their Hoopa, so this is going to be a tough battle. Throw down an FF for some festive fireworks. That is <laughs> Del Fox throwing those down right now. That's a really good like use of the Unite move in this specific scenario, right? As you have everybody yeah. sort of invading that goal. It's like such a huge area of effect that you can lay that down on and still be protected, right? So exactly. uh, wonderful job, Del Fox. Wonderful job, whole team, GT. You guys are looking good out there. And so that will be the end of that match. And of course, I think the viewers know who was the victor there, but why not? Let's get you that final score. Once it actually appears on screen, we're just having a little bit of, uh, yeah, there you go. 609 to 266 was the final score. Look at this, like coding Dings, look at that, 211 on the dunk. Wow, with the MVP, as we saw. Actually, Indy not dunking on either of those games. We, we saw the goose egg right there. It's not horrible or anything like that. It's just, uh, it's a little bit rare. I think if there is one person generally on GG Game and Gladiators when they were that team or maybe this TTV team if there is one person that isn't scoring it might be that Hoopa you're generally making up for it in other ways right I mean you you recover everybody you're deploying those hyperspaces like mad um, so there's a lot of other things that come with being a Hoopa yeah, I would say probably with the Hoopa, more, a lot of the focus I feel like is mostly just on making sure that everyone else can get those Hundo Duncans in. Though it does mean that sometimes you look at your own score and you're like, well, I swear I did a lot, I promise, team. Yes, and so we do want to thank, actually, we can see it in our chat, but Celestial coming in with that raid of 14 right here. Victory Road definitely appreciates that. Thank you guys so much at Celestial. Hard fought, man. Great Dragonite play. You are playing up against a... Uh, dang good team with gt yeah. right there so both great. really good teams and great to yeah. watch super fun absolutely so tings can you just kind of give us any thoughts or read chat if you want to and then maybe throw us out to a break yeah i mean i will agree that there were i i know that you were saying earlier that you haven't been seeing a lot of del fox it's which is surprising to me i've been seeing it a lot in games at least not in tournaments but it is a scary mage like ryan said fox best mage in game not gonna lie i do agree with that it is quite scary and i think right in this matchup it did do a lot of damage and it did do a lot to Basically, I think I saw Kira say earlier, Delphox is really oppressive, especially with that ult, and I think it did make a huge difference. So I'm curious to see whether we'll end up seeing it in the finals, which will be coming up soon.